Um, it's a, such an honor to be here to give this presentation uh, in occasion for, uh, to celebrate the decade of deep carbon science. And I'm, a, I'm so happy to be here. Um, deep carbon has been something very special to me because it enabled the kind of science that otherwise was not possible. Right? So back in 2010, 2011, around that time, I had this brilliant, brilliant idea to use infrared spectroscopy to measure this unique isotopolog of methane, but because it was considered pretty high risk so that I was not able to get the funding to, uh, to, to get things going, right? But then uh, deep carbon, you know, after conversation with Bob and Bob and Craig Shifley, it enabled us, deep carbon uh, uh, supported us to purchase a fundamental component of laser spectroscopy, which is quantum cascade laser that is tuned to measure this isotopic methane. And after two years or so, 2015, we published a paper in Science, and that, uh, with that, I, you know, that, that, that was a big part of my tenure package for MIT. So, so, <laughs> so this year actually you know, saved my career. Otherwise, I would have been making a like, noodle shop in, a, in a Tokyo now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so today's theme is, uh, yeah, this is noodle is a, is a part of art, just like plumbing in, in my lab. Anyway, so. Today's talk is about, theme is about abiotic methane generation in hydrothermal settings. And this is really, this is close to my heart. And, and this is actually the reason that I started all my research around this topic. All right, so let's move on. So this is the most important reaction when we talk about methane formation. I think we saw that yesterday as well. So of course, a bacterial reaction, right? So the reaction of carbon dioxide with hydrogen making methane, right? So if you look at this uh, uh, reaction, this is highly exothermic. That means that the reaction is favored at lower temperature, right? But at the same time, we know that this reaction requires very high kinetic energy to overcome. So therefore, this, you know, at lower temperature, the rate is very, very slow. So this is a Goldilocks principle for geochemistry that if temperature is too hot, then there's no thermodynamic drive to make methane. But temperature is too low, then the rate is very slow. So temperature has to be just right to make this methane, right? So my hypothesis, therefore, is, oops, I'm sorry. My hypothesis here is that there could be a temperature sweet spot at which those hydro methane could be formed hydrothermally in abiotic setting. And this is what we want to know. And this is a tool we use. Okay, so methane is a very simple hydrocarbon. Carbon has two isotopes. Hydrogen has two isotopes. And you can make a variety of combination. And that is called isotopologs. And if you look at this, this simple isotope exchange reaction, Right? And including something called clumped isotopolog methane. So methane with carbon-13 and deuterium together, which is about 6 ppm of overall molecule, molecule fraction. So because this equilibrium over here is primarily a function of temperature, you can use it as a geothermometer at which methane is either formed or equilibrated internally. So now we can do the same sort of business with doubly deuterated methane that is going to be a talk, I think, for Eddie Young tomorrow. All right, so one of the studies that inspired our research is the discovery or, 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 or report of methane-rich fluid inclusions in olivine and plagio clays in gabbroic rocks and peridotite. And this is a nice picture from an uh, image from Frieda Klein's paper uh, in, uh, in the summer this year in PNAS, showing that those, those fluid inclusions are fairly common in mantle rock. And now you think about it, like, you know, the vast majority, the vast volume of mantle rock in ocean crust, so this could be a huge visible methane that is stored in the mantle rock. Okay, so that is the motivation of our study. So when I talked to Jeff Seward and Owen Reeves and Jill, Jill McDermott, and, we, and they supplied us a methane sample collected from those hydrothermal vent sites. Okay, Lucky Strike, Lost City, Rainbow, and Fond Dam. 
those uh, vent temperature there ranges from nearly 100 to nearly 400 degrees. So we pick the sample based upon this temperature. And what is exciting or amazing for this data set is that isotopically, methane is very much homogeneous, okay? No matter where it came from, we see same sort of carbon isotope, same sort of deuterium isotope ratios, and also same sort of clumpiness, that's what we call, and from which we infer the temperature about 310 degrees centigrade plus minus 50. So wherever the methane came from and what, whatever the vent temperature, fluid temperature, methane appears to have come from the common source. And this strongly points that the methane came from just harvesting those pre-existing methane rich fluid inclusions. And this is the idea that we put together in a paper in GCA. So that's not our you know, original idea, but you know, Jeff Seward, Frida Klein, and Deborah Kelly, and all of these ideas. And we can see that we can put the temperature number for this model. So basically what we are suggesting here is that uh, methane formation is not associated with this actively hydrothermal circulation fluid, right? So lost city, we are talking about 90 degrees centigrade, and this is not where methane was formed. Methane was formed like 300 degrees centigrade at the deep inner crust. All right, let's now move on to terrestrial system. So again, DCO supported this, this one, fantastic trip to Iceland, right? So we, this is our colleague, Andre Stephenson and Jens Fieberg. And this is our graduate student, J. Ming Lim. So, okay, look at this, like right? ice over here and steam over here. And this is, to me, this is as abiotic environment as it can be. So those are called steam vents because 99% or more composed of water vapor. And it also contains some CO2, hydrogen, nitrogen, and methane. It's about a few ppm in volume ratio. All right, and then we can also sample geothermal wells in Klafla, okay? It's a northern part of Iceland, where we can sample directly of geofluid from 1.5 or 2 kilometer depths. And again, okay, those carry some methane, so we wanted to know what kind of temperature we're gonna get from this, this, uh, this sample. So Patrick Budere is he's our graduate student sitting over here. Uh, he, he made his measurement, fantastic. And he has a poster today, so if you're interested in detail, just stop, please stop by his poster. So what he measured is the temperature over here in y-axis, okay, this is, a, this is abundance of this clumped isotope log and from which we infer the temperature of 430 degree plus minus 130. So this is like 100 degree hotter than the methane we collected from seafloor hydrothermal vent system. And I found this temperature to be very interesting because this is slightly above the critical point of water at least for pure water, right? And then therefore the density decreases, and then uh, chemistry is going to be different from normal aqueous fluid. So the question is what is the mechanism to make methane in this high temperature environment? So now, okay, we started working with chemical engineer at MIT who developed this fantastic, very interesting software called Reaction Mechanism Generator. And this software was developed originally to model combustion chemistry, which is high temperature and gas phase reactions. And what it does is that uh, for a given initial condition, it can automatically generate all the chemical species and all the reaction rate using machine learning algorithm. Okay. So, and this is a PI of the software. Okay. So what I did is I took a fluid composition from Klafla geothermal well, and also a temperature and pressure condition and put it in a, in a model, right? And then you can generate, in, in like two, three hours, you can generate this like supercharged Tokyo subway map, and that shows how all those species are related to each other. So if you're getting a metal, right? Okay, you can stop at CO2 and go, go all the way down to, methane somewhere. So what it does is it creates 2,000, about 2,000 chemical species and 6,000 reactions and all the possibilities you can explore and from which 
I can extract the reaction pathway from CO2 to methane in this free decomposition. So here are two results. Okay, so on the left is model with a sulfur, and on the right is model with sulfur, so in form of H2S. So what you can see here is that the fluid without sulfur, the chemistry is mostly run by hydrogen radical, and then CO2 is going to be step, stepwise reduced to carbon monoxide, aldehyde, and methanol. But this reaction to form methane is very, very slow because the, the rate is limited by the unimolecular decay of methanol to methyl radical. And once you make methyl radical, then it, it picks up hydrogen from water, makes methane, which is a very quick reaction. So what is very interesting to me is that if you add sulfur, then the key ingredient here is hydrogen sulfide radical, and, but also makes this, this aldehyde or sulfide, thioaldehyde species, and then the rate limit again is the formation of methyl radical. So now we know sort of the reaction mechanism, possible reaction mechanism applied for this geothermal environment. So one interesting prediction from the model is that sulfur accelerates the rate of Sabatier reaction because of the HS radical. I have one minute. <laughs> okay, and it's like, it's about one million times faster if you have sulfur in your system. All right, so for isotopic exchange, we can also predict that the isotopic exchange reaction is also catalyzed by radicals, and it takes about 10 years to exchange this, this, uh, this isotopolog at 700 Kelvin. Okay, so let's go back to what we see in Iceland. Okay, so what we can tell is that methane experienced about 400 degrees centigrade at about 10 years. So this is the bottom line that I can tell. So if methane is thermogenic, meaning that formed somewhere else, then it should have traveled to this very high temperature reaction, the very close to magmatic intrusion, and came back for us to analyze. And if those methane is abiotic, then it could have been, it could have been formed in a somewhat stagnant pocket water body, that's something that Bob just mentioned. Um, because methane formation might take about 10 to 1,000 years. All right, with this, I would like to acknowledge my, uh, my group of people, and I would like to take any questions if you may have. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? Okay, in the interest of time, I think we'll move on to our next speaker, but thank you very much, Ken.